big news. The Almanac is officially back. The most exhaustive and comprehensive guide to the 2023-24 college basketball season is available for pre-order now. If you go to cbbalmanac.com, link is in the description below, you can pre-order for just $15.99 or 20% off the sticker price. The format is going to be a little bit different this season. Instead of an 850-page PDF, you'll be getting access to the full site with league-by-league PDFs available for download. The preview will be live on September 20th. So you have until then to be able to get your pre-orders in. So for insight for all 362 Division I teams from their head coaches and the experts that cover them, make sure you hit that link. It's another edition of the Field of 68 off-season grades. And for this one, we're heading to the main line, to the Villanova Wildcats, who missed the NCAA tournament this past year for the first time since 2012. That that does not happen much at Villanova. So now Kyle Neptune enters year two with a couple of players that you're very familiar with, folks, but a slew of additions via a route that Villanova had not taken previously much, the transfer portal. We'll get to that. I'm John Fanta. He's Rob Dalster. All right, Rob, 17 and 17. This past year for Villanova, uh, at one point, 10 and 12. I mean, at one point early on in the season, after their PK-85 performance, when they went over, it was bleak, bleak, bleak. So trying to wash away what happened in year one and turning the page to year two, let's face it, despite what happened this past year, the expectations going into this upcoming season – are quite high, and then again, you think about it, and this is Villanova we're talking about. Shouldn't they be high? Yeah, the expectations should be very high when you're talking about Villanova. I think with last year, what a lot of people, and we tried to make this point on on the field of 68 quite a bit, was that you got 13 games out of Justin Moore. You got 26 games out of Cam Whitmore after he missed the summer playing with the, the national team. Missed the fall with a, I think it was it was a thumb, right? Broke his thumb. Um, didn't have a chance to really acclimate. Didn't really have a chance to kind of pick up what Villanova does, uh, and did all of it while being one of the youngest freshmen in college basketball this past season. Um, they essentially were five deep last year. Um, Jordan Longino was not himself the whole year. Uh, Kyle told me that he was playing at about fifty percent all season long. Justin Moore, when he got back, was playing at about 70%. He kind of he pushed himself to get back when he didn't need to because he wanted to play. And I think for my money, because of the injuries and because of the players that they were missing, it's very easy for me to just kind of write that season off and say, look, this is the this is why all of this happened. You're not going to be able to do that this year because Justin Moore is almost back to 100%. Because Eric Dixon is back for his fourth season. Because you have as good of a transfer class as anybody in college basketball this year. Tyler Burton was an all A-10 player as a fifth-year senior, averaged 19 points, is a perfect quintessential like Villanova, well-rounded, big wing that can guard anybody. TJ Bamba, fourth-year senior, a guy that averaged 15 points and three assists at Washington State this past season. He is a guy that has a potential as an NBA player. He's six foot five. He's versatile. He could do a lot of different things. Great spot-up shooter, really good piece for Villanova in theory. You're bringing in Akeem Hart, average 11 points and six boards last season at Maryland. Again, a guy that is versatile, a guy that can do a lot of different things, a guy that fits that positionless mold that you want out of a Villanova team. And then you bring in Lance Ware, who, you know, we have our questions about what he did last season, the last two seasons at Kentucky. I'll tell you this, Villanova staff, they seem to really like him. They think that he was played out of position in the wrong role when he was at Kentucky. They say that we are going to be uh, surprised with his ability on the perimeter. We'll see if that comes to fruition. But you combine all of that with the three guys they got coming back. And I don't know how many teams have as good of a top seven as Villanova does. I yeah. think that with, with the combination of how old they are, how big they are, how switchable they are, how versatile they are, and the simple fact that one, Justin Moore is going to be healthy. And two, everybody realizes how much of a stud Eric Dixon is. They have a chance to be really, really good. So I think there's two things that I'm looking forward to, to kind of finding out with this Villanova team. The first is Mark Armstrong. 
you need Mark Armstrong to be uh, to be able to live up to the expectation that he had coming in, right? Like he's a guy that had a little bit of an up and down freshman year. Um, he's more of an athlete than you would expect. It. He's not the the Jalen Brunson, Ryan Archie Diakono, Colin Gillespie style of point guard. Like he is a slasher. He is a get to the rim. He's a rise up and dunk on you at six foot one kind of a guy, right? Um, and then the other part of it is Kyle Neptune who has, it's similar to the conversation with Kim English, right? Like he's got all the markers and all the, the signs and all the pedigree to be able to look at him and say, that dude should be a really, really good coach, right? You spend all that time learning from Jay Wright. We saw what he did in his first year at Fordham. You should be able to look at him and say, yeah, he's going to be a star. And he has won 33 career games. He has a 500 career record. And a lot of that can be, understood there's a lot of context that doesn't necessarily go into the conversation when you just hit stats but we still got to see him do it right so i think kyle neptune proving himself as a coach which my money would be on him doing this year and mark armstrong proving himself as a point guard which i think is a little bit more of a uh of a question mark are the two keys that will determine whether or not villanova i think that they're a tournament team regardless like i think you could coach this group to being a tournament team I think the difference between them being a tournament team and then being like, okay, they belong in that same conversation as Marquette and UConn at the top of the Big East. That is the difference between Kyle Neptune and Mark Armstrong keeping their ceiling and then being kind of like 50th percentile of what you would expect. This should absolutely be a tournament team. If they're not, we got some serious problems. I mean, this, this is a tournament team. This is a team that could be a Sweet 16 team. Yes. I mean, they, I have them. I have them 14th heading into the preseason. There you go. I, I think they're top 15 worthy. No question in my mind. Why? Because Justin Moore was at 70 percent off an Achilles injury and almost got them to the NCAA tournament. They had a home game against UConn on the last Saturday of the regular season, and if they win that game and then make a Big East tournament run of some sort then Villanova might have been able to make the case to the committee that they were never fully healthy, and now they've got a full mm-hmm. complement, and they, they're deserving of a slot. The way the bubble was going, maybe they would have had a case. They didn't beat UConn. They lost that game. We know the rest of the story. Here's the thing. Moore is a player that strikes fear into other Big East teams and into other opponents in general. He's a killer. This guy is a big-time shot maker, can run the point, and just – he can will his team to buckets. Simply put, buckets. He could score off the dribble. He could shoot it at a high level. He could drive it. The fact that he came off an Achilles injury, something as as vicious as that injury, and willed Villanova just back into the picture was pretty absurd in February, what he was able to do. Dixon, Eric Dixon, is a high-level big man who I don't think gets discussed enough for for just what he means to Villanova and how much better he's gotten throughout the course of his career. He's steady. He's going to be hovering around a double-double, and he's a guy who's going to score 14 to 16 points per game. They're going to feed him the rock, and and if he's not scoring that many points per game, it's because for the first time at Villanova that, that I can remember, and this isn't a slight against Jay Wright as much as it is he just had some unbelievable talent that didn't want, that didn't come off the floor because they were NBA players. Villanova has real depth, and I think they'll be able to utilize that as a tool to win games. They don't need to count on one guy to, to always will them. Tyler Burden is a guy who averaged close to 20 points per game, albeit at Richmond. But think about Burden now in a system, Rob, where he's not the number one player on a scouting report. He's I'll done that. It. He, he there's, They won a game in the tournament when he was the second option, third option, complimentary piece at Richmond. Like, he can do that. That's right. part of why I'm so high on this group because you know, like, you know who the studs are, right? You know that Eric Dixon is going to be the guy. And I know everyone loves Justin Moore, but I, I just, I think that Dixon's ability, you know what is amazing about him? By the end of last year, like, they were calling set plays and running him off of pin downs. He was dropping 30 and hitting six threes as like your go-to play was to set a little in screen to get Eric Dixon, 6'6", 250, guy that was a low post banger coming out of high school, have him running off of screens to curl into three-point shots. Like, it's like, what are we doing here? 
you got, it, I, I think that I don't, I'm not sure anybody with calves, his size has ever been considered like a, a runoff of screen shooter, but, but here we are, but I think you got your two studs and I think the pieces that they brought in are yeah. both one capable of, of winning games and have proven it at the high major level while also understanding that they are coming in to be a complimentary piece. Right. And I think that is where, that is what makes this Villanova team so dangerous. That and the fact that their entire starting lineup is going to be able to rent a car. <laughs> That's a good one. Make no mistake about it, too. Part of the offseason is what you do with your staff. Mm-hmm. And George Halkovich goes to Buffalo, and and best of luck to him taking over a Bulls program that, that needs somebody to take over that program and get them going. That's not going to be an easy job. But within that, Ashley Howard comes back to Villanova. Howard's been part of national championship success. He was a staple to the program's success in the Jay Wright era when he was there. And you brought in Baker Dunleavy to be your general manager. And Baker Dunleavy has instantly helped. He's just helped ease the load off of Kyle Neptune. And it's not to say that Neptune couldn't handle it. I think that Kyle Neptune had the the surprising it was surprising to everybody, uh, task of filling Jay Wright's shoes when the retirement happened. And when we say that was a whirlwind, whatever, whether you want to make an excuse or not, it was a total whirlwind for Kyle Neptune to take over the Villanova program, considering the run that they had been on and considering the deck of cards that he inherited. His The guy who was supposed to be his best player blew his Achilles out and was going to be out for the majority of the season. Colin Gillespie wasn't walking through that door. Jalen Brunson wasn't walking through that door. Ryan Archdiakono. Villanova had had 10 years of not good point guard play, not great point guard play, but like all-time point guard play. They didn't have that. They never that really point- is an all-time point guard run. Think about that. You go from go from Ryan Archdiakono, All-American, to Jalen Brunson, arguably the best college basketball player that we have seen in the last two decades, to Colin Gillespie, All-American, now playing for the Nuggets, just won, national, yes. uh, won an NBA title. Yes, that was an all-time run of point guards. Now, you could say, well, Neptune should have done this, should have done that. Okay, it was a struggle bus for year one. And and there are circumstances that lend themselves to that. But now he's got a roster, okay, that even one injury should not derail this team. And you just said it. They brought in guys who are going to embrace what their roles are on this team team. Hakeem Hart did it for Kevin Willard and Maryland. He helped an NCAA tournament team, a round of 32 team, I might add. Tyler Burden understands what it takes to make March Madness. He beat Iowa, as you just said, a couple of years ago. Remember Jacob Gilliard and what he was able to do with Richmond and Burden was on that team. TJ Bamba should fit right into what they're going to ask him to do. I think he'll play really well off more. My biggest question is I expect him to take a leap, but will Mark Armstrong be great? Yeah. So the thing about Armstrong, and I've talked about this before, and it's not it's not as prevalent with with Kyle as it was with Jay. But um, what Villanova does is they don't run a lot of sets. They don't have a lot of scripted offense. Like it's the complete opposite of if you, if you watch UConn. Like UConn has sets with counters to the counters to the counters to the counters to the counters. Like, they probably have the deepest playbook in college basketball, them in Michigan State. Whereas Villanova kind of runs, like, four or five different things, and they teach concepts. And essentially, it's, like, it's very – it's it's basic in theory, right, where it's someone's going to get a paint touch, you're going to draw a defender, you're going to kick it out, that person's going to shoot, attack a closeout, draw another defender, kick it out, that person's going to shoot, attack a closeout, uh, drive whatever you're going to do, and you just ki- kind of keep playing like free flowing, um, free flowing basketball in that sense. And the issue that they have is without that all American point guard, it's that getting that first paint touch, it's that that first uh, level of breaking down the defense. And what they tried to do last year was just have a bunch of guys dribble into post ups and back guards down, which like worked to a point and it worked fantastically when you had a guy like Jalen Brunson and, and Arch and, and Gillespie being able to do things like that, but when it's Caleb Daniels or when it's 70% of Justin Moore, like it's, it's very different with those guys doing it. Now 
I think Mark Armstrong is the one guy on this roster where if you kind of put him on an island, he should be able to get a paint touch almost whenever he wants. And I do think he is the guy that can kind of create that, that can kind of get you into that offensive scheme that they that, that Villanova wants to play. So if he could be at that level, I think that would be enormous for Villanova. I will tell you this, he uh, he had a couple really good games playing for the U19s in Turkey this summer. He also had a couple of dreadful games playing for the U19s in Turkey this summer. So um, he needs to figure it out. I think it's very, very important that he figures it out. Um, and I, I think based on the history of Villanova and the success they've had at that position, you probably want to lead towards him finding a way to get it done. But like, I don't know how you can say anything else is the X factor for this team other than Mark Armstrong. Go ahead, take out the report card. What grade are you giving the Villanova Wildcats for their offseason? Um, I mean, you got I got to give them like an A minus, right? Like, I don't. How could you have really done that much more? Um, I think that your point about the staff is very important. Getting some of those former head coaches in, um, just having more experience on the bench, guys know that know what not to do. Uh, I think is something that helps almost as much as guys that know what to do. Just having another set of eyes, I think it, it, it just it matters. All, all of those things kind of help. Um, I think that one underrated part here is that there were a lot of rumblings about Justin Moore uh, transferring out, about Justin Moore ending up at a potentially a program uh, back closer to his native DC, um, and Villanova found a way to one be able to to you know, get him to come back and to do it without him even putting his name in the portal, I think says a lot about um, what they did there. So I'm going to give him an, an, an A minus. And the only reason I'm going to give him an A minus instead of um, instead of something higher uh, is that I think one of the bigger needs that this program needed this offseason was just like a straight up knockdown shooter, like uh, someone that, you know, on a wing is going to shoot like 46% from three an Eric Pascal, a Dante DiVincenzo and Mikhail Bridges. And I don't know if they have that. that. That's the one, the one knock I would put on this roster is I don't, I don't know if I necessarily trust the shooting, but I'm going with an a minus. I'm going to give them an a, uh, because I think that they had to totally change up what they have been doing. Uh, to become the program that they're expected to be every year. And I think that they did that. I think that all their additions make a lot of sense. Tyler Burton, Akeem Hart, TJ Bomba are all going to play key roles for this team. But Justin Moore's back. You kept Justin Moore and you kept Eric Dixon. Justin Moore could be Big East Player of the Year. He's that good. If he has the caliber of a year that he's capable of, watch out. And he's just been around the block so many times. In so many big games. I mean, remember, folks, this is a program that made the Final Four. All right? Uh, not this past season, but the one before that. And Moore was integral in getting them there. And if he stays healthy, they could have won the national championship. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that much to the Villanova Wildcats. You know, a guy to keep an eye on, Brendan Housen, who's going to be a sophomore here, he can shoot the ball. And when you're on a team that oh, real quick on him, Kyle said that he's the best shooter that they've had in the Villanova program ever. Now that might be a little bit of an exaggeration, but um, we'll see if he can actually uh, crack the rotation. I mean, they yeah, got, they got eight guys in front of him. We'll see if he'll be able to do right. it. That's not counting Chris Archie Diakono, who somehow, somehow is still on this roster. It'll just be, it'll be 2035 and there'll be an Archie Diakono on Villanova. Mm -hmm. If they could find enough of those catch and shoot, Makers, uh, they've got the pieces to flourish and be a top four team in the Big East Conference. We'll see if that comes to fruition. This has been the offseason grades on the field of 68, the Villanova Wildcats grading high. Our partner for today's episode is Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 during the college basketball season, and I loved the impact that it had on my energy levels. I'm a big coffee in the morning guy. But by the time that the afternoon would hit, I needed another boost. AG1 helped me tremendously, especially on those days when I didn't want to get up off the couch and go hit the gym. Their tagline is, AG1 is comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. And man, that could not be more 
true. It's nearly impossible to eat and drink in a healthy manner in the month of February and the month of March when you are in my business. And AG1 was exactly the supplement that I needed to improve my gut health and cover my nutritional basis for the day. I've continued that into April. I've continued that into May, and I'm going to continue that the rest of the summer. All I have to do is mix a scoop of AG1 with some water or maybe add it into a smoothie and I'm ready to go. Do it after lunch and you'll be ready to go for the rest of the day. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com backslash field68. That's field68, F-I-E-L-D, the number six, the number eight, and you can get yours now. So check it out and help support this show. Thanks.